Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the construction of non redundant data sets. Why do we need non redundant data sets? What is the meaning of non redundancy? How these data sets influence the prediction models or the any, any large scale data analysis? So, in the last lecture, so do you remember what did we discuss in the last lecture? mainly about hydrophobicity profiles right so what is hydrophobicity profile sequence it's a plot connecting the amino acid sequence versus hydrophobicity values so we have experimental hydrophobicity values for the 20 different amino acid residues right for each residue you assign the values and construct a plot which information we will get if we construct hydrophobicity plots so uh, like secondary structures correct we can see some sort of patterns or motifs right so you can see any specific patterns for example in alpha helices right or beta strands for example alternating hydrophobicity or transmembrane segments dominated with the hydrophobic residues so right? we can see some profiles and we can see the patterns and relate these patterns to any specific structure or function right then we discussed about amphiphaticity right what is amphiphaticity that it is a periodicity of this polar and nonpolar residues in any amino acid sequence. You can see some specific periodicity in the case of alpha helices or beta strands and so on. Then we discuss about patterns where patterns are defined with some symbols for example, square bracket right what is the meaning of square bracket Inclusive right you can include any amino acids which are given within the square bracket right for example, we have a square bracket and a i t. So, any residues within this group is allowed. If it is curly bracket, so the rest is which are inside this bracket. For example, if it is uh, D, the D is not allowed under particular position. So, likewise, you can make any motifs or you can see any patterns. You can also search the database, right, for using the pay or any reference search, right. You can see the whole uniprot sequences, whether you can identify any specific patterns, okay. The patterns and motifs are important for several functions. Then we discussed about the profiles, right? Position specific scoring matrices or position weight matrix, right? How to construct the position weight matrix or scoring matrix? So, we take the frequency, we take of, the frequency of residues. First, we need the multiple sequence alignment. From the multiple sequence alignment, we get the frequency. Then, we convert the frequency into this matrix, alignment matrix, right? By, by normalizing with the probability of residues, right? For example, in the case of nucleo nucleotides, right? or for example, the amino acids. In the case of nucleic acids, right, the probability is 0 0.25, the amino acids you can 0 0.05. So, you can uh, uh, use the pseudo counts and finally, normalize, right, you will get the matrix. So, we discussed various applications, for example, the prediction algorithms and the binding sites, right, different types of functional uh, important sites and so on. So, now if you do the in analysis, in bioinformatics, it is very important to construct data set, because data set plays an important role in the analysis as well as in the prediction. If you have very good data sets, right, then you can relay the reliability of any prediction methods is very high, right. So, because the results are biased with the data set, right. In this case, it is very important to construct a data sets which are not redundant with each other. In this case, what is the meaning of redundancy? What is the meaning of non redundancy? So, for example, if the two protein sequences which are similar to each other, you can take any specific cutoff for example, 70 percent or 80 percent, when it is 80 percent in the sequence A and the sequence B, right, 80 percent of the sequences are the same or similar. So, if you add up these sequences, this will introduce a bias of these sequence because they are influenced with the data which we obtain right from these sequences. So, in this case we need to avoid bias, we need to construct a sequence non redundant sequences 
at any specific cutoff depending upon the problem we choose. If you have 100,000 sequences, right, we have more number of data, right, then we can decrease the cutoff, we can use, use 20 percent or 30 percent, right, so that we will get sufficient number of data for the analysis. If the initial data set is small, then we need to set the cutoff accordingly, so that we will get sufficient number of data for the analysis, because uh, for the redundancy this will cause a bias, so it is important to construct a data set of completely non redundant for example, anything with 40 percent and so. For example, here I get two sequences, right, this is one sequence, sequence 1 and here you go another sequence, sequence 2, right. If we take these two sequences, what is the amino acid composition for alanine? Total here 10 residues, here 10 residues, total 10 residues, how many alanines? Right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 by 20, this is equal to 0 0.20, right. In any, in some cases, for example, if one of the sequences appear twice, that means we introduce a bias in this analysis. For example, this sequence appears twice. Now, totally how many residues? 30 residues, right. Out of 30 residues, how many alanines? It is 7. So, if you take the composition, now it is 0 0.23, this is over represented. If you have the second sequence twice, then what is average alanine? Totally 30 residues, 5, 5 by 30 equal to 0 0.17, right. Likewise, if you include the same or similar sequences in your data set and you extract information, you can see a bias, right, that we introduce because of the same sequence or similar sequences right you are including in your data set. Hence, it is very important to construct data sets for any analysis which are non redundant with each other. So, how to get this non redundancy? How to construct non redundant sequences? So, in bioinformatics there are various approaches right I will explain this uh, one of two important approaches and several software available to construct non redundant data sets. One of the most popular software that is called CD heat. CD heat refers to the cluster database and the high identity with tolerance. So, what this program does? So, our aim is to get the non redundant sequences. For example, if you have 1000 sequences or 10000 sequences, you need to extract the non redundant data from this initial data set, right. So, here you have to give these sequences and boot because in this case we need to remove redundancy from the sequence. So, it takes faster format right first of all much we discussed earlier right that it starts with the greater than symbol right. So, it takes all the sequences as input and it gives a set of sequences which are non redundant right that depends upon the user's choice. We can specify the cutoff, we can specify the word size right I will explain now right and this CD hit will treat all your sequences as input and depending upon your convenience or your uh, needs right it will give you the non redundant data set. So, how it gives a sequence right it uses a clustering algorithm to eliminate the redundant sequences. It takes your sequences or make some clusters and based on the clustering it will take the non redundant from picking up the sequences from each clusters. What is the use of this program why this CD it is very popular because this program handles a huge data sets right even if you have thousands of data it can handle the huge data sets and give you the results very quickly. Then it is easy to download and this CD hit you can get the results very quickly. So, we can use the CD hit to create non redundant sequences at different sequence identities for example, 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent so on. The disadvantage of CD hit is it has some limitations to restrict the sequence redundancy either up to 30 percent or 40 percent depending upon the program you use online or you get the uh, this uh, downloadable version. So, that is only disadvantage other than that if you want to get any specific sequence cutoff up to 30 percent right we can use CD hit and it is easy to use and get the results very quickly. Let us see how uh, the CD hit uh, works. So, it uses the greedy incremental algorithm to select the protein sequence sets. 
So, it takes some clustering technique right try to assign each sequence on magnetic particular clusters and then check any of these features and using the features you try again and again and again right this is called a greedy algorithm unless the deviation is very less even then it is not satisfied. So, look for other better solutions again and again right and to find the most probable solution for uh, getting your non redundant sequences. So, how it do it does it takes the sequences and we can specify the identity for example, 40 percent and if this specific threshold if it is more than the threshold for example, 40 percent right this will be discarded. So, then it takes the longer sequences first and then proceed with the shortest ones and what is the sequence identity right we discussed earlier sequence identity is the number of identical residues divided by the length of the shorter sequence. For example, if you have two sequences right right this sequence 1 then sequence 2 So, what is the sequence identity? Right, this is same 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 by 10 this is equal to 60 percent. If you have two sequences which are more than a particular threshold for example, 40 percent right, will you consider both or you will consider only one? only one right because it is more than 40 percent. So, do not keep both so they keep one and discard other one right this is how it works. So, if you take the explicit algorithm alignment so which algorithm we use for sequence alignment blast. blast right. So, blast is widely used if you have several sequences for example, thousands of sequences if you want to make the sequence alignment complete sequence alignment it is very time consuming right it takes lot of time to make the alignment and find this identities or not. So, this implements an algorithm without aligning the complete sequences. So, it takes a specific set or specific subset and then see whether you can find any subset of residues which are same between two sequences. For example, if two sequences A and B they are considered to be 90 percent sequence identity there is at least one peptides right at least of 8 residues like deca peptides or 10 residues which are available both in query and the database. If you look into this two sequences which are identical or similar or the high identity then you can see long sets of residues which are similar to each other for example, 100 residues and the identity is 90 percent how many residues are same 90 residues are same. In this case if you look into the sequence at least some segments if you see the large stretch of residues which are the same we start that assumption they try to use only deca peptides also the different uh, lengths and see whether any segments right which are same in both the sequences then do not have to do the complete alignment look for the uh, stretch of residues if they are same then they assume that they are 90 percent identity. So, you, this is because of the reason why because it is highly redundant there should be some stretches which are the same among different sequences. Then with the different sequence identities for example, 85 percent or 80 percent or 75 percent they try to reduce the length for example, 4 residues or 5 residues like, like pentapeptides right or tetrapeptides or tripeptides and they also set more number of segments. For example, if you take pentapeptides there will be they treat that maybe for, five, for example, 5 or 6 pentapeptides minimum 5 pentapeptides the same then you can say that these two sequences which are have the identity of about 85 percent. And the second aspect is when they reduce the weight size then the efficiency decreases right why because, yeah, because if you have the dipeptides or tripeptides there is a possibility of several peptides, but they are not similar even then you can see several tripeptides or dipeptides they are similar to each other the possibility is very high even if you restrict the number of times right you can see the dipeptide or tripeptides. So, they started with the longer segments and the reduce the segments 
and the increase the number of segments to identify the residues which are similar or redundant with each other. So, there is a compared size and another one is the number of same, same words try to identify the sequence identity the two conditions one is word size and the second one the number of same words how many times the same words appear different at different locations. So, how the CD heat works right it uses the clustering techniques right. So, one of the popular techniques that is called the k-means clustering how the k-means clustering works it is a method of cluster analysis which aims to partition n observations right for example, you have n sequences right n observations into limited number of clusters for example, here k clusters say 5 clusters or 10 clusters in which each observation belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean right because that should be within this nearest mean. For example, if you have n observations like x 1, x 2, x 2 up to x n right the k means clustering right tries to put these n observations into k sets like different sets. So, that it minimize the within cluster sum of squares right if you see the within the clusters right you can see the mean and any new sequence right the distance between these two features right they should make it minimum. So, you take any clusters all the representative sequences within the clusters right that should be the minimum fine. So, here I show an example here they like to have three different clusters then for any sequence they try to find out the most probable cluster and then once it is find with one cluster then they reorganize change the values then again assign the other residues. So, that for each cluster the value should be minimum. So, finally, you can see here this one cluster here this another cluster and put the third cluster. So, here I show one uh, animation. So, here we have n data n observations. So, we need to decide how many clusters you want to form in this figure right how many clusters are desired 5 right here k equal to 5 right 5 clusters. So, first randomly they put into 5 clusters and try to see the average values for these 5 clusters and try to rearrange themselves. So, that you can see for any specific clusters the mean value that is should be the minimum within that particular cluster. So, you can see a cluster here and you can see the cluster here right. So, there, there will see 5 different clusters right we can see the different iterations right how these uh, points moves you can see the 5 stars right move everything together and when you converge you can see the clusters are very uh, restricted right the deviation is very restricted. So, they can form any particular clusters. Then we take the representatives from each clusters right. So, that you can form any non redundant uh, data right in sequences or any any data. So, what are the various features how to get these sequences in a particular cluster there are several ways there are several features you can uh, think of to cluster these sequences. So, one is a Hamming distance right based on the composition for example, if you deal with sequences we discuss with various features. Right, what are the various features we discussed for the amino acid sequences? Occurrence, composition, pair preference, molecular weight, hydrophobicity. So, any features, right? You can you can calculate. For example, if you take any property, say hydrophobicity, if you have 100 sequences, you can calculate the hydrophobicity for all the 100 sequences and make some threshold. Right? For example, it is between 10 and 12 kilocal or 12 and 14 kilocal, 14 and 16 kilocal right within that clusters you can put together. So, how many sequences do you require? So, you can you can put this cl different clusters right and then see what is average values. Then if you add or remove anything, so how this very value changes and if it is standardized then you can get the, uh, the representatives from each clusters. 